Thank you for tuning in to another week of Hill and Emerge Radio broadcast. My name is Quandria Patterson. This month's topic is answering the call. And we started out looking at Matthew chapter number four. The first week we talked about Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. And we came from the topic, deny yourself. Because in that moment, Jesus was fasting and he had been fasting for 40 days. And Satan had approached him trying to get him to respond to the dictate of what Satan was saying. Um, He told him to turn bread into stone. You know, you are all powerful. You know God. God is with you pretty much. Turn that bread into stone. Trying to get Jesus to work for him by using the the power source and the relationship that Jesus had with God. One thing about the denying yourself is whenever you are a child of God and you you have a relationship with God you don't allow anything outside of that relationship to dictate how you operate within that relationship that is an exclusive relationship with just you and God and It's nobody else's business to be inside of that relationship telling you how to, how to operate within your relationship with God. And that's what the devil was trying to do here with Jesus. You're hungry. You you haven't ate for 40 days. I know you're hungry and you want to, you want to eat. So why don't you just turn the bread into stone? And then you'll have bread and you can eat it. Or um, why don't you, so we are up here on top of this um, roof. Why don't you just throw yourself down and then the angels will save you. You know, giving words to Jesus. And Jesus' response to the first one was man shall not eat or shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And to the second one about um, throwing himself off and and see if, if the angels will save him or if God will save him. Jesus response to that was that you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. God is there when we need him. His whole um, purpose Um, that he has in us having a relationship with him is that we follow him. We listen to him. And as in, while we walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, that we fear no evil because we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Once we give our life to him, each time we walk out into life, evil is present waiting to do something just like the devil was there to manipulate Jesus to try to tell him to do things that would automatically put him um in line with with Satan Jesus resisted that there's also a scripture that says resist the devil and he will flee inside of a marriage a natural marriage you don't allow if you have a good strong marriage and and it's in decency and in order with the way that God established it you don't allow you don't allow outside people to come inside of your marriage and tell you how to deal with your husband or how to deal with your wife unless there is an agreement that the two of you are going to seek some counsel one person is not off listening to somebody else um, tell them how to handle their husband or their wife. Eve is a perfect example of that. Adam and Eve were in relationship, in covenant with God. 
And Eve allowed an outside voice to come in and tell her, oh, God didn't say that. You know, did he not say that? Well, this is why he said that. He he said that because he don't want you to be like him. He didn't tell he didn't tell a 100% lie. He mixed truth and lie together, just like the devil is doing in um Matthew chapter 4 with Jesus. Mixing the truth and the lie, trying to get Jesus to use the the giftings and the anointings of God like like magic like um like he controls it and not God Satan told Eve to do that so that she could be in control and not God and the only way that you live through Christ is if you die to yourself you relinquish your control of your life. You admit to God and to yourself that you are not in control of anything and that you want him to take full control of your life and to lead you and guide you and strengthen you. When we get to the point where we think that we are in control, that's when the devil backs up from us and leaves us alone because he already has uh, polluted our minds into a area or a direction or a, a process that benefits him. So he doesn't need to bother the person who starts to think that way because they will do his work for him. The only thing that we have control of in this life is yielding to God. Laying our life down. That's what Jesus said on the cross. No man take my life. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I can raise it back up again. That's through Christ. That's that's the only thing we have complete control over. Everything else if we are in line with God and we're doing this living in this life the way that God wants us to do, God works through us. It's his power. It's his glory forever and ever. Amen. And we'll go into that um, when we read our prayer as we do each week. So that was the first week when we talked about denying yourself. And then we went into the next week. And that week, we talked about, let's see, it is not about you. And we came from uh, when Jesus was walking by, that was still uh, Matthew chapter 4, starting with verse 18, when Jesus was calling his disciples at this point. Um, um, Peter was fishing. Simon called Peter. And Jesus said, um, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Stop fishing for yourself and come and, and do this fishing for me. And I'll make you fishers of men. I will use you if you allow me, if you're willing to draw men, to save souls, to make people whole. And you'll, and, and you'll eat from this word. And it will give you life. It will be your life. And then we went to John where it was saying, don't judge your brother unless you be judged. God is the judge, not us. And we talked about how it is not about you. This week, we are going to talk about be this attitude. And we are moving right along in the book of Matthew. So that's Matthew chapter 5, where it is talking about the be attitudes. And we're just going to kind of read right through that and, and talk about it, pause in spaces, um, and talk about what the scripture is actually saying. Be this attitude. And the topic for the month is answering the call. 
we'll go to our foundation scripture, which is Isaiah 55, 8 to 11, where God is saying, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. Verse number 12, for you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress tree and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And today, what the reason why I went into verse 12 and 13 is because a lot of times in life, things come after us. Things get mixed up inside of us because we're not we're not shielding ourselves like we should with the word. But the grace of God is sufficient for you. That in your weaknesses, he's made strong. So your 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 lack of being perfect, your lack of being good even. It's something that God expects and he has provided grace and mercy to cover you in that. And as believers, it is our love for God and God working through us that covers a multitude of these sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. God's thoughts and ways are not ours. We look at things in life and we see things um, the way that we see them. Not keeping in mind, like this scripture is saying, that God's thoughts and ways are much higher than ours. God doesn't see like we see. He doesn't see us like we see us. The song from Paul Morton, Lord, help us to see ourselves like you see us. Sometimes we see pain. When you see victory, we see ourselves defeated, but you see us more than conquerors. You see us faithful. You see us believing that you are able. And we have to see ourselves like that. And we have to see like that for our children. We we can't speak things over them that is presenting in, in, in reality. We have to tap into God's thoughts and his ways, which are much higher than ours. And we have to speak over our children. We have to speak life over them. We have to speak words to them that let them know that they are loved. We have to speak words over them that let them know that they are strong. We have to speak words over them that lets them know that they are wise. That they are mighty in God. That they are valuable. No matter what we see with our natural eyes, that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We have to speak that over into our parents. We have to look in the mirror and speak that to ourselves. We can't believe what the enemy is telling us and showing us and even causing us to play out 
we have to reject that. We have to rebuke that. And for the people who can't do it for themselves, we as believers have to unite and do that for them until it manifests itself. Until that faith becomes the substance that we are hoping for in our children, in our children's children, in our parents, in our neighbors, in our brothers and in our sisters and in ourselves. We have to get there. We have to come together and do that if we want to see a change. Mm. In Jesus' name. The um, scripture, I mean, the prayer that we pray every week comes from Matthew chapter 6, um, verses 9. It's Jesus talking to the disciples and saying, In this manner, therefore, pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's God's kingdom. It's God's power and it's God's glory. And the only way we get to participate in that power is by dying to ourselves, yielding to him and allowing him to work through us. Any other way that we operate in whatever power we think we have is a lie. It's of the devil. You know, God was showing me something um, just, uh, maybe it was today or maybe it was yesterday, but He was showing me that the difference between light and darkness, the difference between God and the devil as far as power is concerned, is that God has the power to create. Satan would like the power to create, but because he's so dark and and his ways are so ugly, The only power that he has is to destroy. And us against him, absent of God, we are no competition for him. We are defeated. And when God created us, whatever God creates, Satan, the only way he can even be relevant is to possess something that God has created. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. That darkness was Satan. It was just there. And it says the spirit of God hovered over the waters because it's through the water that God works in our life. Um, The scripture says, um, be cleansed by the washing of the water by the word. Jesus is the word. So when God said, when he's hovering over the waters, you know, and, and and trying to, you know, see what is this darkness. He said, let there be light. And when that light came, it was the word. It was Jesus. And when that light came, God was able to see things that were good. That darkness that ugly stuff cannot do, it can't do anything but be a big glob of, of just negativity, just a big, it said, um, it was void. 
and it didn't have any form. It was just a big, you know, block. And whenever we allow Satan in us, that's how we feel. We feel like we're not productive. We feel like that's where that depression and that anxiety. Um, Adam and Eve didn't have fear until they ate the fruit. Then they became fearful that they were naked. But prior to then, they weren't, they weren't running from God. They weren't hiding. They weren't fearful. That came from the enemy. Whenever we feel um, like we don't have form or we don't have void, we just feel like we're just existing and we are self-destructing, get into the word. Invite Jesus into your heart. Let him come and wash away that dirty, stale, stagnant water. Let him cleanse the water. And once that water is clean, once the light comes, then you get that Holy Ghost and fire. Because once the water is clean, that's where your power is. It's like a river of living water springing up into everlasting life. Before you allow the word to cleanse that living water, you have that stale water. And so you have to allow the spirit of God to come and cleanse you through the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Be clean. Be clean. Be clean. Let the word work in you and in your life. You won't regret the day that you make a decision to do that. You'll start to see a difference immediately. And you'll give all the glory and the honor and the thanks to God. It's nothing that you can do. You don't have the power. And as long as you think you can, that's where the devil wants you. You have to admit that you don't have the power. And allow God to do the work through you. Won't you? Will you? Will you admit that? And let Jesus do what he already has done for you. Invite him into your life. Okay, so we're going to go to Matthew chapter 5. And the topic this week is be this attitude. Matthew chapter 5 says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and he was seated. His disciples came to him. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That's what we're talking about. Being hungry and thirsty for what is right. For they shall be filled. If you ask him, he will do it. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor, the pure in spirit, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And you want to kind of think about that. If you're going about your life, walking in the steps that God has ordered for you, walking out the purpose that he created you to be, whatever that is, and people are coming against you right and left, and it's all you can do to stay sane, keep your eyes on God. God says you're blessed. You're persecuted for walking the walk that God has ordered and ordained for you. Don't, don't let anybody knock you off of your block. It's the scripture in Galatians. Galatians 5 
it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty there, I mean, for thereby Christ has made you free and do not be entangled again with that yoke of bondage. It says, you ran well. Who hindered you? Who stopped you from doing what it was that God called you to do? Who did that? And it's just saying, look, look, reflect on that, figure that out, and get back on track. That's Galatians 5. If you have a chance, go and read that. But walk, walk, the, walk it out. And even though you might not be able to completely fulfill that walk, you're not there yet. You might just be making the decision tonight to turn right and keep straight. Any step you make in the right direction is progress. Any step. And God honors that. So don't let the fact that you are not where you should be or where you want to be or where you think God wants you to be stop you from taking the steps in the right direction. Keep, keep stepping. Keep stepping. Move off that block. Move, move off that, um, that emptiness, that place that, that has no form and that's void, that's causing you to self-destruct, that the devil is using to keep you in a position of where he can kill, steal, and destroy you. Move off of that and start walking in a, in a, in a direction that God has ordered for you that will help you and walk you right up out of your troubles. You can, you can do it. Don't talk yourself out of it. You can do it. Verse number 13, Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its flavor, how shall it season? How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light shine. Remember the little song? I don't know if y'all remember it. If you're young, you probably won't. But let your little light shine, shine, shine. Some of you older people will know that. Because it's somebody down in the valley who's trying to get home. And you have to let your light shine so that you can, so that you can help others find their way. Um, five, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men to do so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. It's up to those of us who believe. And if you are not a believer tonight, I invite you to, in, to give Christ your life. Invite him into your heart. Ask him to save you, deliver you, set you free, put you on the right track. Make a believer out of you so that you can be a light on a hill shining. And you can draw your children and your children's children. You can be a beacon of hope. People can see what you were and what you have and what you become. And it will give them hope. So tonight, I ask that if you don't know Jesus, invite him into your heart. Believe in him. Believe in yourself. Make a decision to live differently. Make a decision to trust God. To step out on him. To try Jesus. And see 
how he will make a difference in your life. And until next week, be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.